And for more, we are joined now by Howie Lau. He is Managing Partner of Corporate Development and Partnerships at NCS. Mr. Lau, welcome to the studio. Um, you know, Singapore is accelerating itself uh, to be uh, its efforts to be a global AI hub, right? So where does it currently stand when it comes to digital resilience? Well, uh, Shahida, first of all, thanks so much for the opportunity to be here. I think uh, the simple answer is that I think Singapore has a very strong foundation in digital resilience. But if I were kind of to break it down, digital resilience has probably a couple of components. It has cybersecurity, data governance, app robustness, infrastructure, and operational readiness. So the reason why we think that Singapore has a strong foundation is because if you look at it on a three levels, the government levels, mm -hmm. you have agencies like IMDA, CSA, and many others that has put together progressive programs and policies in this space. Okay. Second, we believe that organizations in Singapore have access to technologies and tools uh, to help them with this journey. Mm -hmm. And third, we also have very progressive uh, industry associations like SCS and SG Tech that are now uh, playing their part in this space as well. So it's really a collaborative effort. Very much so. Um, the digital landscape, we know that it is constantly evolving and already we are seeing these emerging threats like, you know, deep fakes, misinformation, AI generated fraud, right? So where do you think the gaps lie? What are the pain points that need to be plugged, that need to be addressed? Well, the, we, we all know that in the last year or so, mm -hmm. AI has been the big word. And every organization recognizes that AI is a game changer. But every organization also recognizes that uh, to find the right use cases of AI, it's not easy. Mm. Because tech in itself, technology in itself is meaningless unless it is able to solve a problem. So that's why we feel that it's not just about AI adoption, but coupling the AI adoption with a secondary muscle called digital resilience. Then it allows the organizations to deliver the right type of value, but at the same time prevent itself from those harms that you are uh, referring to as well. And it's really about understanding those risks and threats, right? Mm. Um, so this is where NCS probably comes in and tries to support the companies mm. in their AI adoption efforts. Tell us more about NCS new offerings. How do they differ from uh, existing AI and you know, digital resilience products that are already on the market? Well, I think if I take a step back, we are in a unique position uh, for a couple of reasons. One is that we work with clients across, and we operate about 20 plus cities in Asia Pacific. Mm -hmm. So we work with clients across multiple sectors. And this allows cross-pollination of ideas and uh, new innovation. So that's one uh, vantage point. The second is that we work with a lot of technology partners from global giants to startups. Again, this provides us a view as to what the emerging technology will be. Mm. And by putting the two together, um, we decided that we should try to help clients by putting together a series of frameworks, pre-tested solutions, accelerator and tools. And, and that's what we announced today. I like how you put it, cross-pollination of ideas. Um, the solutions are also offered to the public sector as well. How can a suite of services like this uh, benefit even the ordinary citizens, the man on the street, people like myself, perhaps? Well, I, I think if you look at from a solution standpoint, there will be the primary value from the organization, but there will always be a spillover value for the, the citizens in this manner. Mm. So, for example, one of the solutions that we have uh, pre-tested and announced is a call center solution that's aided by AI. Okay. So we all have our own experiences calling call centers and mm. the potential frustrations along with it. But an AI-aided call center could potentially help you get an answer better, faster, and at the same time reduce the workload uh, and the paperwork by the call center uh, agents itself. So it is value to the organization, but potentially value to the citizens or the consumers. Yeah, and, and understandably, you know, for organizations, uh, they have varying levels of uh, AI maturity, right? So how is NCS helping companies uh, through their different AI needs? The good and bad thing is that with every tech shift, we're now in the AI tech shift, not, not that long ago, we were in the mobile digitalization shift. Yep. With every shift, uh, there will be innovators and there will be folks that takes a bit more time. Yeah. It could differ by country, it could differ by industry. Mm -hmm. Some industry is a bit faster, some a bit lesser. I think for us, what we try to do is to take the collective learning 
and ideas and put it into prefab, uh, pre-thought through, pre-tested solutions and offerings and framework to help organizations at whichever level of maturity to say, hey, look, um, I am ready for step one, but here are the tools available for step one. I'm ready for step two. Here are the tools available for step two. All right, Mr. Lau, uh, we, we've learned a lot today. So thank you very much for speaking with us. Uh, that was uh, Howie Lau, Managing Partner of Corporate Development at Partnerships at NCS, talking about AI and digital resilience. So as a key figure in the technology innovation ecosystem, and with your involvement in organizations such as the Singapore Computer Association and SG Tech, um, dedicated to fostering collaboration and innovation. So what strategies do you believe are paramount for cultivating a robust culture of innovation, particularly amidst the rapidly evolving digital landscape? Um, the associations you mentioned, Singapore Computer Society and SG Tech, these are non-profit industry associations in Singapore that's in the tech industry. I think Singapore is kind of unique in that um, we used to say that Singapore is disadvantaged because we're small. But there's also a school of thought that says we are advantaged because we are small in that in Singapore, in this small little island, there's 728 square kilometers. Everyone knows everyone. Mm. So the role of the associations is basically as a way of galvanizing the village to come together uh, towards common objectives, common issues, common things that needs to be done. So I, I've been very lucky to have been uh, involved with both SCS and SG Tech for many years because while it's a volunteer organization, it's a great place where we are able to pull in different stakeholders of the industry towards common goals like whether it's talent development or things like innovation where you know, there are certain agendas we're going to push. Or it could be even as simple as the fact that because we know each other, it's a lot easier to drive partnerships. So I think the advantage in an odd way of being in a small country like Singapore is like everyone knows everyone. Mm. So when the village is small, everyone kind of knows who does what mm. and if there are common issues like innovation, common issues like talent, uh, common uh, issues like for example uh, driving new, uh, new, new technology areas, um, I think that is perhaps what, what Singapore has a, has a unique advantage. Yeah. Uh, it's really interesting how Singapore is like the fact that Singapore is like a small island state really helps in the aspect of like collaboration with like the different like uh, companies also. Right? And, and I think especially in the tech industry we are kind of unique in that in Singapore you have a very nice ecosystem of global HQs. So I think there was some report that I think there's like 70 or 80 percent of all the tech uh, giants have some form of headquarters in Singapore, mm. whether it's the Google, the Microsoft, the AWS, the Oracles, the IBMs, there's a lot here. The second part of the tech ecosystem is the local boys, like NCSS of the world, and not, we, there's a lot of uh, local boys here. Then the third part of the ecosystem is that we do have a lot of startups. There's at the last count, I think probably 4,000 to 5,000 tech startups based out of Singapore because there's good uh, venture capitalists and, and funding available here. Mm. Then on top of that, you have large corporates like uh, DBS and SIA who are big users of technology. Uh, and then lastly, the government. The government here is very tech progressive. Uh, it's been the case since the 1980s. And they are always leaning in to look at using technology in creative ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the government really had a really big role, like a part in like, ensuring this ecosystem, especially with like the low like corporate tax rates and uh, encouragement of like startups through like the implementation of stuff like you know like block 71 and mm. so on yeah so um as a board member of cyber youth singapore and science center singapore you are leading you're leading the next generation by fostering them as innovators creators connectors and problem solvers so mr lao for students aspiring to make a positive impact through innovation is there a key thought that you'd like to impart to our students as you come to the close of this discussion well, I, I think, first of all, uh, I am actually super encouraged because um, I think meeting you and, and, and what you are doing with this initiative is very encouraging because I think the wonderful thing about technology is that technology is ageless. Uh, you don't have to be a certain age to be able to harness technology to do something meaningful. Um, the Cyber Youth Singapore is a youth for youth, non-profit organization. Um, the team there 
um, basically looks to be able to use to help use their fellow use use technology better uh, to help the uh, to bridge the gaps they may be out there and to drive a positive agenda. Science Center is about inspiring young minds uh, in the world of STEM. Um, so I think the uh, maybe a few things in my mind is that one is that uh, the best time to start uh, is yesterday. It's the second best time to start is today um, because digital is ageless. Um, it doesn't wait for you. Uh, so it's uh, how you embrace it. And then the second is probably more along the lines of uh, the good thing about tech is that the rules are yet to be written. So yes, you can kind of look backwards and say what were the things that worked and how it can be used for. But there's so many amazing things that can be done and it's just application of some creativity. Um, I remember uh, many years ago, we did a, uh, we did a youth for youth type of hackathon, uh, more like an ideathon. And uh, the theme was about cyberbullying. Yeah. And there were two students from a secondary school that came up with a very simple, uh, it wasn't an app, it was a, a piece of code that sat underneath your digital keyboard on your mobile phone. And there was a bit of intelligence behind uh, that says that if you're using your keyboard and you're using angry words, mm -hmm. you will detect your angry words and after X number of minutes of angry words, it will ask you to stop or you will pause your phone <laughs> so that you will calm down yeah. uh, because you could be the one doing the cyberbullying. Mm. Uh, so when we saw that, we were like, wow, it's just such a clever idea. Um, and I think we've always been, just last week we had a uh, hackathon with uh, the finals on hackathon with NUS and the eight finalists, they came out with the ideas on how to use data uh, for the future of urban mobility. I think there were great ideas ranging from better accident management to uh, better planning for traffic management to things like better cycling paths. Um, so I would say the second thing is, you know, uh, feel free to rewrite the rules. Uh, yes, there are things you can learn from the past, but uh, there are many things that is yet to be written. Mm. Yeah, and uh, thank you so much, Mr. Lau, for sharing your valuable insights with us. As we navigate the complexities of an ever-changing world, let us heed Mr. Lau's call to action, embracing chaos as an opportunity for innovation and collective progress towards a sustainable future. Uh, thank you so much. No, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much.